Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're gonna to install this Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 on the 302 in my 66 Bronco. Please check out my prior video on the reasons I selected the ProFlow 4. We're just going to dive in and start disassembling this um, top end of this motor to get ready to install this system and then I'll unbox it. I'm going to try not to make a huge mess so the first thing I'm going to do is just siphon out as much of this radiator fluid as I can. See how dirty that is? That's what, I didn't clean out the motor. I should have cleaned it out before I did all this, but that's fine. Step two, which should have been step one, disconnect the battery. I run marine terminals on all my batteries and then crimp it with a, a lug that's got the hole. Just, I find it makes everything easier. I don't like the, the ones that come on stock batteries. It's just a personal preference. Uh, step three, I'm gonna get this thing on 12 degrees before top dead center. So the Edelbrock instructions tell you to put the engine at 12 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a wrench on the um, crank bolt. So I'm relatively close. So what I'm gonna do is pop off the distributor and see if it's near the number one cylinder. If it is, then I know I'm on my compression stroke and that's all I need to do. I am so good. I'm on my compression stroke. Now I can finish getting that exactly to 12 degrees. 20. And it's just a skosh. Good. Let me show you what that looks like. You can see the uh, harmonic balancer. What I always do is mark white as uh, zero degrees, and then I put a, you know, just like gold Sharpie every 10 degrees. So you can see I'm a little bit past the first 10 degree mark. So that's about 12 degrees before top dead center. So now I can pull the distributor without where I like, I know I'm on the compression stroke. I know this is one less variable. I'm already at 12 degrees. And also the oil pump drive is aligned to have that sit in there theoretically. So I should be able to drop my distributor in this exact same spot. So I'm gonna take a photo of the orientation and try to match it up with the new distributor that comes with the Edelbrock. And it's at about the one, one o'clock mark. Now I'm gonna go through, pull all the plug wires. Should have put dielectric grease on these. There you go, one. Actually, four, three, two, one, her speed lower, five, six, seven, eight. Try to keep your back straight. Now, you don't actually have to do this. You can just disconnect these and lay these over. But I'm going to transfer them because, you know, the, the actual spark plug wires are numbered on this so I'm just going to transfer over to the new one and then make it make it easy or hard depending on how you look at it. I had to shave this to make it work with the body on, on these four distributors so this should pop out of there. What I typically like to do is just stuff a paper towel into the distributor hole because if you drop something down there that's a very bad day. Uh, this is just an air cleaner from Summit. I found that the bigger 13 inch one, which is the one I wanted to use for for this truck, I actually had one from Tom's. It hits the, it hits the, what do you call it? The crank bell. I'm gonna break my fuel line loose here. Okay. I dropped the paper towels on the floor and uh, let them air out, if you will. Now I'm gonna disconnect all the electrical and vacuum, which is really just, oh, this is matrique, isn't it? Don't usually recommend using power tools on 
things like that, but I knew that would break it loose. Okay, so that comes off. Okay, and put that to the side. Disconnect the choke. Okay, and pull out the PVC. Lay that over. I'm gonna actually take the uh, tensioner belt off so I can more easily access my the little clamps that the heater hoses are attached. Yeah, 14. Okay, and luckily these silicone hoses for from Tom's do come off easier than the rubber ones. Okay, case in point. Out of the way. Okay. Got some backfiring happening when I was tuning it. Kind of charred the back of the phenolic spacer. Okay, uh, let's dry off some more. as soon as possible. Okay, it doesn't look like I got very much cooling at all in there actually. And the intake gaskets actually still look really, really good. Slippery. So maybe to get some water in there. Not sure, not sure. Okay, let's take these off. What? Get the big chunks off. Get a Scotch Bright pad. Sort of work the rest of it off. All right, that took me maybe 45 minutes tops, talking and recording. So your mileage may vary. I've done this 40, 11 million bajillion times, but um, that's the stage you need to get at to get it ready to accept the new ProFlow. I'm gonna clean up my workbench, put the tools away, put the carb away, drain the fuel out of the carb, and then um, we'll meet back up for an unboxing. You pay 2,000 bucks and this is how it comes packaged. A stapled set of drawings and this. Oh, I guess it's kind of in there, but I mean, okay, I take it back. I didn't realize it was, but it's all, it's all there, man. It's all happening. And then on the other side comes with a box. This has, I'm sure, wiring harness, distributor, intake manifold gaskets, Compute tray, leather pack connector. All right, so I'm, I'm orienting myself to this kit here, and what I found is it's pretty straightforward. This, let's call this the computer part of the harness. This plugs into the computer, okay? There's a little pigtail here if you wanna do a CAN bus interface. This is just a relay, I need to find a place to mount it. That's a fuse, I need to find a place to mount it. This goes to the injector harness, which we'll get to in a second. And this says coils IAC, and I don't see that anywhere. I'll look it up just to verify. This goes to your O2 sensor, and that's it. On this harness, power, ground, and then the always hot wire, uh, in crank and run, not always hot. In crank and run, it's hot. So that, that's that side. Everything plugs in. These are the fuel injector plugs. So this goes to that last harness we are looking at. There's eight injector plugs and the rest of these just are up here. Fuel pressure, uh, throttle position sensor, idle air control, blah, blah, blah. 
and then, oh, there is this other harness. So this goes to the distributor. This plugs in, that's that other plug that goes into that. Idle air control. So this is, let's just say, the front part of it. What is this? Uh, po positive and negative for the coil, which I'll have to extend that because my coil is not up on my, I think I'll need to extend that. Yeah. So pause and neg on coil. Let's just fit it into place and see. See the location of that is such that the, a 90 is going to hit is going to hit the alternator. If I do the cro if I move the crossover to this side, then I'm just going to have this thing here which wouldn't be the end of the world, except it dips down so low. I wonder if I can just make a shorter crossover. I think those are just dash six fittings, but I don't know how I'm gonna get, because this needs to go into, that's gonna be tricky. Okay. The real question is, do I paint that manifold? I definitely think I'm reversing the fuel though, if I can. I'm gonna go look that up. Okay, that's part one of the Pro Flow 4 install. It's prepped and ready to go. Now, this is what I like to do. I'm gonna take the instructions, read them a couple times, ignore them completely, and then finish this uh, install next time on Matt's Garage.